Kevin, when Mark gets connected to you, I can imagine this is not the first person who's asked for your time. What was it about Mark that you saw in him or how he framed this that made you say, oh, I'm going to make time for this guy? So it, it, great question. I think, first of all, Mark is um, he's, he's very um, understanding of the commitments that I already had. And so, for example, M Mark actually he said, hey, Kevin, I'm going to be actually hanging out in St. Pete for for about a month, bring the family down and and like kind of couched it like he had some things to do and maybe they were going to hit the beaches and whatever. But what he was what he was doing was he, he didn't he wasn't saying I'm going to be at your 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 office or your house every single day. It's like as there were availabilities or get this, as we would as we would fly around to different events, we got a four hour flight to this place and then another four hour flight back. Well, what are you doing on those flights? Well, th this is a chance to really hang out and get to know each other very, very well. And and by the way, there's there's eight hours of potential mentoring that mm -hmm. you can do on flight. So so I the, the thing that that just blew me away about Mark is how much he respected my time as well as making sure that he, he would always make it as easy as possible for me to to do the mentoring services, right? So whether it would be a breakfast that, that we were, you know, at an event together or a flight, like I mentioned, or whatever it might be, he was very concerned about making sure that it was easy. And as he said, he, this was his goal to be my best student. Mm. And I can honestly say, I can't think of anybody in all my life. And I've mentored, you know, hundreds, if not thousands now, um, that has actually been a better student than Mark. It's interesting about, you know, this idea of making it easy for you As some of the people that I've said yes to the most weren't necessarily on my radar, but they were the ones that said, Hey, I know you like to work out. Can I just go on a run with you? Well, yeah, I'm, right. ru I'm running anyways. Sure. Why not? I'd, I'd enjoy some company. And they, they weren't asking for everything in that first conversation. It was building a right. relationship. And, you know, in my experience, I'd love for you guys to say more about this. When somebody comes to me and they're asking for my time and mentorship, almost like I'm a vending machine, like you put a dollar in and I'm going to kick out mentorship. You know, I kind of <laughs> feel used. Like I want to have a relationship and relationships cook over time, just like in sales, just like with your team members, just like with your social life. You know, you, you don't get married on the first date. And it's a process of getting to know each other. And, and both sides are kind of figuring out, hey, is this working for us? And it's really on the mentee to put in a lot of value for the mentor and make it worth their time. I, I, I actually have coined the phrase because people ask me a lot, you know, hey, did Kevin sit down and like teach you or whatever? No, man, the, the guy is on constantly going, you know, I mean, his whole life is scheduled in 30 minute blocks. And so the mentorship I got from Kevin, I call contagious proximity. Mm. Like I learned more watching him do business than I ever did him teaching me business. Like I watched him negotiate deals. One of my favorite lessons from Kevin was most people think of a shark, okay? As I got to get the best deal and the most equity and the most cash or whatever. And I'm watching Kevin do deals. And all of a sudden I realized, wait a minute, he's putting like way more time into making sure this is a fair deal. And, you know, they, I, I watched people offer him 50% of their company just right off the gate, no negotiation whatsoever. And him come back and say, no, you know, I think the, the, the fair place for me to be is 25%. And I'm thinking he just left 25% on the table. What's, what's going on here, man? This guy's yeah. uber successful. And then through our conversations, I started realizing the reason that most deals for entrepreneurs fail is because they're not scalable. A shark deal is not scalable. It's a mm. one-time deal. We brag to our friends, I got this great deal. It's a one-time deal. So you structure a deal or a partnership with somebody. If you got the best part of that deal, as soon as it scales, it fails. Another deal that's not scalable is generosity. If you're just helping someone out to get them started, as soon as that scales, if they come back to you and expect that, you're like, whoa, wait a minute, I was just helping you out. But they expected that to be your deal. So generous deals don't scale. Shark deals don't scale. But Kevin figured out that a fair deal is the only scalable deal. And it's scalable to a million, to 10 million, to a hundred million, to a billion. You structure the right mm. deal up front and be fair about it. I caught that in contagious proximity and I've now put it in place in my life. I mean, I, I live by that lesson that I learned from him, but I watched him do it in proximity of him. It wasn't something he sat down and said, let me teach you lesson number 38 of, uh, you know, of, of being successful Got as it. an entrepreneur. Yeah. And so that's what you're talking about. You 
you know, my dad was one of my mentors and a business guy, often with deals, he would say a great deal is one that you would take either side of. Kevin, what do you think? Mm. Yeah, I agree. And because what Mark was talking about this deal where they were offering me 50%. Well, of course, what did they want? They wanted me to do 50% of the work and 50% of every aspect throughout the, the, the whole process. And that's why I said, no, you're the founder. You're going to do the work. You're the CEO. I'm going to be providing advice and services and, and this and that. I don't want 50%. I want 25%. And that's a fair number for me. And you go grow the business because maybe you're going to need somebody that you can bring in at a point. If, if I had 50 and you had to bring somebody in and give them 10 or 20 or 25 percent, you would have less than me. And you're the founder of the company. So, you know, you, you've got to position this. So I'm almost mentoring on the front end of doing the deal the right way because I don't want them. And and. I've had this happen. Oh, they go back to their, they talk to their lawyers or the this or the that. How dare Kevin try to get 50% of your company, right? I mean, like, and, and is he going to do half the work? You know, so no, it, it's it's all in the expectations and, and the deliverables are important to discuss on the front end. So that's one of the focuses for me when I get involved with the relationship is to make sure that we both understand what it is I can and can't do and how that's going to work. And then I want to be compensated in an equity way in a fair fashion, but not too much. And I, I'm going to tell on Kevin a little bit because he won't brag on himself, but he mentioned early on Ginzu Knives and Arnold Morris. So they did hundreds of millions of dollars in sales, right? And so everybody knows Ginzu Knives. What they don't know is that at a certain point, Kevin's CFO came to him and said, you cannot write that guy another check. These checks have more zeros than <laughs> you know I've ever seen. And and not only did Kevin say, oh, we're not, we're not only going to write him the check, but you hand me the check so that I can go hand it to him myself. Mm. And what ended up happening was because of the fair deal that he struck, and it was a fair deal, Arnold Morris went out and literally introduced Kevin to anybody that had a cool product. And so the abundant way of structuring a fair deal is that it has legs that you can't even anticipate. Mm. And so here, Arnold Morris got a fair deal with Kevin. So he wanted to go tell all of his friends, this guy, if you're even thinking about doing business this way, there's only one guy in the industry you talk to and it's Kevin Harrington. And so th there's a contagious ripple effect to doing business that way. The phrase comes to mind that you can shear a sheep a thousand times, you can only skin it once. And uh, there's this idea of w when things are good for everybody, then everybody wins and the rising tide raises all ships. And, you know, we're not here to take, we're here to give, we're here to serve, we're here to contribute. And if, we, as our friend Zig Ziglar would say, if you help enough people get what they want, you can get what you want. So yeah. uh, I love those principles. You know, Mark, it strikes me, uh, you were saying that essentially more is caught than taught. When you're hanging out with Kevin, he's not just sitting there enlightening you and you're taking notes. You're watching him in action. As business owners out there who are busy running their business are trying to figure out how they can go shadow or be in the trenches with somebody else and get that mentorship, how did you find the time to hang out with Kevin and you know, actually get in the trenches with him while you're still also trying to run your business and do your thing? Yeah, well, it's well, one of the ways is that, like I said, it wasn't a tough sell to get my family to go from Indiana to St. Petersburg in January. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I'd like to say I'm good at sales and learned a little bit from Zig, but that was one of the easier sales that I've ever made. And so, yes, I, I did have businesses that I was working on, but I found that Kevin and I got involved and we were one of the things we were doing was extending the legacy of Zig Ziglar. We got involved in a project where we were extending that legacy and we had to travel to different events and places. Places. And so Kevin hit the nail on the head. I'm traveling from Indiana. He's traveling from Tampa and we're meeting up different places. And I, it hit me if I was to go to Florida and we had to travel, we traveled together. We were in Ubers together. We were at airports together. We were on flights together, sitting together. You know, I'll, I'll never forget the first flight I took after coming down to St. Petersburg and I'm sitting there and he shows up at the airport and he's got two bags. One bag I recognize as his computer bag. The other bag I never seen before in my life. And the other bag was like bulging full. We get on this flight, it's a three hour flight. And so I've got three hours and I'm like, I have all the things I can think about to ask him and, and learn from him. But instead this bag just had me, you know, so curious. And so the ding went off and I got my computer out. I'm gonna try to get on Wi-Fi, and he gets this bag out. 
And all of a sudden he starts pulling out magazines and newspapers. And, and I, I, I didn't ask any questions because I'm like, what is going on? And he's ripping pages out and he's got this manila folder and he's sticking pages in and he's throwing all this stuff on the floor because he's going through it so fast. And almost like I was on Canon camera, the stewardess comes up as I'm sitting here just going, what is happening? And she shows up, Mr. Harrington, you know, can I remove all that for you? And she's got a trash bag just dedicated for him. And she fills up this trash bag. She carries it off. And then he goes at it again and he gets another huge pile and she shows up and she takes it all away. When it's all done, he's got this tight little folder of exactly what he was looking for. Mm. And this was my introduction to aggressive curiosity. He was looking for the eyeballs. Where are people looking? What are they looking for? Why are they looking for it? But he could have told me that story, but I saw it happen over a three hour, it's three hours from Tampa to Toronto, it's three hours. And he got through that huge bag in three hours and he knew where the eyeballs were at. And he knew what kind of businesses lined up with where mm. people were looking that's aggressive curiosity. I couldn't have learned it any other way than being in contagious proximity. So yeah, I was busy. I just made sure I aligned myself in a way that I could be in that proximity, that I could be in the audience, listening to him on stage, backstage, supporting, helping him, doing what Zig Ziglar says. I was helping Kevin yes. be the best version of Kevin so that I could learn from him in the process. Well, and don't miss this. I, you also started a project together that put you in that proximity. I think about Dave Ramsey, my CEO. He's been one of my top mentors. I've In 17 years, I've learned so much from the guy, but it's never just sit down and drink coffee and take notes. I mean, we're working together. We're building things together. And there's nobody here in Nashville that Dave just sits with and meets with to mentor. But there's a lot of people that get mentored by him that don't work here, but we've got some kind of mutual project that we're working on. And in working together, you build a relationship and you get to see, oh, here's how this guy works. And I just think those lessons are so much more powerful than just uh, dictating advice, you know, and, and, and there's a place for that, certainly. But uh, it sounds like you're saying that if you could create an environment where you guys have something to work on tactically, it'd be a lot better than just talking through things. Completely agree. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I mean, we as as Mark and I were developing the the we we created Secrets of Closing the Sale Masterclass of digit a digital version of everything Zig had done, and so um, we had a we had a great passion for that. So both of us had been mentored by Zig. We we had relationships with the family, and and we also had kids that didn't really have the, the, the knowledge of, 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 of Zig's teaching. So, so we're like many, many people want this and let's, let's work on this together. So that, that was a great project for us to, to, to work on together. As, as, as Mark says it, we both were pushing uh, the, the day to day of that across all, all spectrums, traveling and doing everything together. Mm -hmm.